Hear ye, hear ye. I forgot what I said the last time. This is not the second recording. Not the second time. Hear not ye. the second day we've done this. <laughs> not the first time either. <laughs> nope. Not the first time this has happened. A lot of errors here, but yeah. hey. It's it's the end of the year. Things are what, things are falling apart. What's our budget on this? Zero dollars. I actually looked the other day. It's zero dollars. Yeah. Wow. And it's the end of the year, so the budget has been we've used all of it. Hello everyone, welcome back. Talking about the Guardians of Galaxy holiday special. The last thing of phase four officially. Mm-hmm. On to phase five after this. Is it technically phase four? Mm-hmm. I thought the, every, I, they were very much like, well, Black Panther's the end of Phase 4 with well, like an asterisk that yeah, is the yeah. holidays. special. And there's like the holiday special. Yeah. It's obviously directed by James Gunn and with a story by James Gunn. And it follows Drax and Mantis as they steal Kevin Bacon as a Christmas present for Star-Lord. Yeah. He's feeling a little, feeling a little blue Christmas, if you will. He you doesn't know. know where Gamora is. Yeah. And he's like down in the dumps. His dad... Still tried to kill him. <laughs> his mom, gone, long gone, time ago. Killed by his dad. Killed by his dad. <laughs> just a rough family <laughs> time for this dude. Lots of lots of just Christmassy stuff. Yeah. Misunderstanding Christmas. That's most of the jokes in, yeah. this, in this thing. <laughs> Aliens don't know Christmas. And ah. It's like super funny, you know? <laughs> but overall, yeah. the story, it's a... It's a goofy goober of a little special. Yeah. It is not meant to be taken too seriously, but there are some serious moments. Yes. It's got Dave Bautista, Palm Clementiev, Chris Pratt, Sean Gunn, Michael Rooker, Karen Gillian, Kevin Bacon, Kira Sedgwick. Kira Sedgwick, yeah. Uh, the voice of Maria Bakalova. Yeah. Also Kira Sedgwick's voice. Yeah. It's just, it's just a rock and rolling Christmas. It is a rock and rolling Christmas. It's like a Brian Seltzer, like... <laughs> Like rock and rock and roll and Marvel cinematic, the Marvel Christmas universe, if you will. You yeah, know? Gen Xers were eating good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were. Batista in a movie. Just a Gen Xers delight. Yeah, right? oh yeah. I mean, James Gunn is. Uh, I mean, uh, a needle, a a a, 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 like a Smashing Pumpkins needle, uh, needle drop. I mean, wow, kids of the nineties. <sighs> Loving it. It mostly focuses on Drax and Mantis. And while it is comedy heavy, you do get some revelations from Mantis specifically. And we're not going to spoil it, no. but if you've been on the internet, it's been spoiled yeah. a little bit. Uh, I think it really sets up what's going to happen in the movie really well. It's like, because we know it's probably Drax's swan song, the yeah. movie is. And Mantis needs to grow as a character, anyways, too. And I think she's going to be, she's always the linchpin because her power is on emotion. Yeah. So it's like, of course, she's always going to need to have the emotion part of it. It's a fun duo that like, it, it picks up, you if you remember in volume two, they are the two that kind of like, Drax obviously sees her as like this surrogate daughter mm -hmm. that he lost. And she sees him as, I, I don't, not a dad, but just like a weird, like an uncle, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. So it is, it makes sense that you've paired these two characters together. Uh, and it's also, they're the two most closest to humanoid characters yeah, yeah. That, that we have. That So they'd be like, yeah, they could probably walk down the streets of LA and people would be like, yeah, that's just a weird costume. <laughs> Where if you've got like Groot and Rocket running around, which would have been fun. Yeah. But chaos. It, chaos. So like that, I mean, the National Guard gets called, you yeah. know, like, uh If you, if anybody watched any of the Groot and Rocket cartoons, all they do is cause chaos. Man. No matter where they go, it's just Man, chaos. I, just, I wish. <laughs> the police fight, the fight scene that they have with the police in, on Earth when they're chasing Kevin Bacon is probably the best encapsulation of who Drax and Mantis are yeah. as characters. Because Drax is just like, I'm having fun, even though they're shooting at me. <laughs> when he says, I'm going to be my bands, I lost it. I don't know if it's just Dave, the, 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 just hearing Dave Batista say these ridiculous things all the time. That makes that character so funny yeah. that you've got this guy who, you know, in the 90s was just known as this, like, very macho dude. And he's just saying the dumbest stuff and it just works. Yeah. I don't know. It just, I'm like tearing up thinking about it's how great it is. it's it's great because he's like as strong as like the hulk and stuff like that and yet he's just comedic relief yeah i know people want more of drax because he's got a sad backstory and we'll probably get that yeah. in 
in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, but it's like, we need some comedy characters. Yeah. We briefly touched on it in our She-Hulk and our Werewolf by Night, but I think they need to move to more, like scale back the TV shows a little bit, still have them, but not have as yeah. many. And then a couple specials every year. Still pushing. I'm still pushing for an Ant Man Thanksgiving special where he just <laughs> where he makes big foods and then small foods for ants. It's like an ants Thanksgiving too. Oh, you nice. Know? Yeah. What if they? What if the ants? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Sounds fun. Yeah. It is fun. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be awesome. If you're one of these kind of like big concepts, but you just you know you can't commit a movie to it. It's like yeah, bring back. I I totally think that like a Favro or or Bryce Dallas Howard, or you know these people who are very well known and either just like Lucasfilm or Marvel, mm -hmm. like these big names could come in, do a special, and they feel like okay, like I'm not committing to to three years, and so I think one, it's it'll be nice pacing wise, yeah. So we're not that we're not just like another eight episodes. Here we go, <laughs> eighteen if you're Daredevil in a few oh, years. I'm not ready for Daredevil. <laughs> and so and it, it'll just like. It's just a nice kind of breather, and it also creatively gives, I think, a lot of wiggle room. You know, you're not confined to, because we've already kind of nailed down the basic, here's what's going to happen in the TV shows. Oh, fourth episode, we're getting a fun cameo, you yeah, know, yeah. that kind of mm -hmm. thing. So it, it keeps it, it keeps us on our toes, and I yeah. like it. It's kind of hard, because it's like, there is Marvel fatigue. Like, I have it. I'm still excited to watch yeah. the products, but I want le I want less... Because always less is more sometimes. It's become less of a week to like, oh, I'll catch up on three episodes. Mm -hmm. I'll give it three weeks and I'll catch up. I'll yeah. give it another two weeks and I'll catch up. So yeah, it, it definitely, you're starting to feel it. James Gunn, we now know he's the head of creative for DC. Uh, he sprinkles in some DC references in here. What? How do we feel about his overall execution? I know we still got the one movie, yeah. but how do we feel about his overall execution about his little his little MCU bubble that he has? Yeah. I really enjoy it. I think that this is, you know, I think now that we have like Black Panther, that feels very much like its own thing, and mm -hmm. it's very and it thrives and it's awesome. But I mean, like back in the day, like this was. I mean, I remember seeing Guardians of the Galaxy and just being like, "Oh man, this is incredible! Yeah. This is so much fun!" and it feels totally different than like it can be its own thing i think he's just continued that trend which is great he's just so good because he's been so isolated in this world that he can pay off these emotional he can set up emotional beats and pay them off like over two or three movies like yondu even this has like yondu has mm -hmm. a, a part in the special that continues that payoff of yeah. like mm -hmm. he, we get a little bit more you know and so i think he's He's, I think he's done a great job. With the DC stuff, you wonder like, is it gonna be too much? Or like, what is his kind of role in that? Or what, like how much, how much yeah, yeah. control does he have? Which sounds like he's got a ton, but I also think, I'm gl I hope that we're to a point now where he could like, he could come back and do another special if he wanted to. Or if he just wanted to do, a, not even a Guardian special, if he's just like, I really love this random character. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. do a special on it, you know? Yeah. like. I just think he's he's just really good at taking those obscure characters and making them lovable and massive hits. He took the best parts of like the Buffy verse and Trauma verse, yes. and like he's like, here's what the populace loves about these two things, and puts them in the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Speaking of which, there's a lot of moving parts for the third movie. You got Drax's swan song. You got Mantis's progression. You got Star Lord being emo. You go. You got the whole "Where is Gamora" storyline, yeah. and ro I mean, then Gunn has said this from the get go that like this is a rocket story too, yeah. and I'm like, man, like yeah, what, what is it? Get, <laughs> is it? Is it going to all come together? I don't know. It's it's one of those movies that it's either going to fail at what it's trying to do, or it's going to hit the note perfectly. Yeah, because that's what was people's worries with the first Guardians movie. It's like, well, I don't know. This is an unknown property, yeah. and then they nailed it. And then the second one was like, well, how can they top that? Yeah. And they nailed it. Yeah. So it's their three for three for Guardian stuff. At some point, like, there is a little bit of a worry. But at the same time, I trust James Gunn. Yeah. Almost everything he's done, comic book related, has been good. Yeah. So it's like... I, I think it's going to be great. I, It is. You, you do... You do wonder, I'm sure these talks have been in the works for a long mm -hmm. time. And so I do wonder if 
this is where he maybe gave a little bit of like leeway to Marvel. Marvel's like, hey, we need you to at least have these three things. And yeah, he's yeah. like, okay, I'm leaving, so I will. You know, it's I just don't know. I don't know what the situation is, but he's also been very outspoken about like how great Marvel is to just let him do his thing. So I I trust him. I think it's gonna be fun. I, yeah, you know, I don't know. It's it's it, it's gonna be sad though. You yeah. Know? It's gonna be and, a real sad movie. And you think about it, the whole Sly Stallone group's gonna be in it too. Yeah. Like, what is going on? The Ravagers own well, nowhere. It, yeah, that we get that drop that the Ra- the Ravagers are oh, just own it now. They're like, hey, this is ours. And then you know, also you've got uh, Adam Warlock showing up, and mm-hmm. you're just like, what? What are we doing? Like, <laughs> like you, you look at it, and you're like, how are they gonna pull this off? Before we say goodbye, do you think Bismarck Matakalak is gonna make a comeback? Like, he shows up in the beginning of the movie just to say his name, Bismarck Metakalak, but... No, I don't think so. Mm. This just feels... It, it really is a Christmas special. It's like there's a cartoon element to it. There, There's fun songs. Mm-hmm. It's like this really is, like James Gunn said, let's just legit make the most Christmas special we yeah. can. And that includes silly songs and cartoon yeah. elements and, and characters that you'll never see again and... If you have like a passing knowledge of Guardians, this is probably something you could like. Because yeah. it's simple, easy, fun. It's like 40 minutes. Yeah. Goes by super quick. It's got lots of jokes, lots of Christmas stuff, lots of un, uh, lesser known Christmas songs, uh, some underrated Christmas songs even. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's a very fun time at your couch. What about this? Thinking about the band. Mm-hmm. What if we do a special about them our TV show Boba Fett it book of Boba Fett it and it's just them like on the road you yeah. know that would be a bad idea because you just said book of Boba Fett <laughs> and it was recept- received poorly <laughs> okay it's an Andor <laughs> story it's an Obi-Wan one but it's nothing no- nothing happens <laughs> nothing happens we we the, we're in the same spot we were when we started oh yeah yeah alright goodbye goodbye